while we're praying, the Lord gave us the name Lapis Lazuli. It sent us to Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 25 to about 27, where it talks about Lapis Lazuli. And uh, when we looked up the word, um, Lapis is a Latin word that means stone, and Lazuli is an Arabic word that um, describes blue. And so this gemstone has some golden inclusions or pyrites inside it and it's usually found in, in Afghanistan. Looking at the Bible again, we found lapis lazuli in many verses in the Bible. We found it in Exodus 24:9-10, when Moses went up to see God with the 70 elders of Israel. And they found under God's feet pavement made of lapis lazuli. A change in someone is the state of their heart. And I've noticed something formidable, something very interesting that everyone who attends a lapis lazuli ministries conference at the end of the three, four, five days, they are never the same again. It's as if sitting in the conference center, whether physical or online, once you sit there for all the sessions, there's such a grace that comes upon you. There's an impartation that rests upon you, a new anointing that comes upon you that you cannot but be changed from the old person, the person that attended the conference and the person who is leaving the conference. is a ministry that we can collaborate with. It's a ministry that God has ordained and he has been using in a unique way. The Peace Azuli Ministries is a vessel that seeks to awaken and reconnect all hearts back to the extravagant love of the Father. I've seen as people have stepped out, come forward for prayers, as people have come out to 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 meet Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, encounters being slain in the Spirit. Once you're slain and you wake up, you can't be the same. You just can't. So hearts are awakened, lives are transformed, and I've seen so many people who have started ministries because they came to a Lapis Lazuli ministry conference. At the end of that conference, many received the boldness and the courage to do something new, something different. And that new, different ministry, something that they, they birth, is as a result of what has happened in their heart. So an awakened heart leads to a transformed life and transformed actions. Lapis Lazuli is a bit like a, a deep well where people come from anywhere to drink and then they take it and go and um, bless those in their areas of, areas of influence. And so we are really happy that we can um, be God's vessels in this way. It's one of the ministries that God has ordained to bring people back to their Creator, to realize the purpose of our living. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. A lot of people that have received the ministration or passed through or Lapila Suri ministry as minister to, they recognize their self, who they are in Christ, with the love of the Father. And one of those things, did you know that Lapila Suri is a ministry that minister to people in love and practice it? And it is important to note that we are a ministry, we are not a church, and we work with people from all churches. La Bila Zuri Ministry is not operating church, or is organizing conferences, seminars, and programs that can be a blessing to everyone's life. It's one of the ministries that God has raised in this end time to be a blessing to our generation, to impart life, and to make everybody to come back to their Creator, and to see the real love of our Father. This ministry emphasizes the healing power of God by teaching biblical principles and sharing forth God's love and power. 
A lapis lazuli showed all of us that what Jesus did, we can do likewise because of the Holy Spirit within us. We don't need to be mighty men or mighty women of God. We are ordinary people doing the extraordinary. We are special people doing the seemingly impossible. During the conference, you know, I saw the way people, you know, the heart of people, how open their heart is even to accept the love of the Father. And I could see the joy, I could see the, the joy radiating in the heart of people. Uh, whenever the program is on and the testimony time, I see people jumping out, you know, giving it a series of testimony. And that's how my journey of transformation started. Just watching what the speakers were doing, like Randy Clark, made it so simple that you can heal the sick. And what did we do? We walked out, stepped out in faith, laid hands, prayed the short prayers, the five-step model prayers, and we saw lives being transformed. We saw healing happening, and my life hasn't been the same since then. I've never had such an experience before, but it really goes down deep the root, down the root, and it, it really it liberated me. There was a, a total deliverance from a lot of ache and all things that I've been tangled with. And it really, it has really done a, a great work in my life, in my ministry, and in my family entirely. See. Yes, I remember an incredible experience, and I'll say this, it's my, it's the, the testimony concerns my sister, my only sister, um, Dr. Gubi Aida. Um, she is she is very involved in the ministry. She's also a member of the Board of Trustees. And this was the conference in Abuja. And I remember she was downstairs with us and next minute she left us and went upstairs to the next level. Um, at the conference center, National Conference Center in Abuja, you have the ground with, and then you have the gallery. So she went up to the gallery and in the gallery you had people who had come from different parts of Nigeria and many of them couldn't really speak English, so they had um, what they were hearing, they had translators um, translating to the language, their local dialect. So my sister went up and um, there was someone she just felt very drawn, led to pray for. So she approached the person, laid hands on the person and prayed. And the next minute the person was screaming and people were shouting. Why? Because it was someone who was blind, had come to that conference blind and their eyes opened, popped open. Even my sister was shell-shocked. It was like, what? Blind eyes can see? And um, that for us blew our mind because uh, my sister had just started her walk with the Lord. So that was a clear demonstration that it's not how many years you have served, it's not how many years you've walked with. We all carry the creative power, the anointing and the grace to do miracles because we have the Holy Spirit in us. It's not us doing it, it's the Holy Spirit working through us. And that for me was just one of those clear signs. There are so many more, but that's the one that stands out for me. We were at the International Conference Center and the conference was going on. And there were widows that we brought in from Maidugui. And when they come to Abuja, we transport them to Abuja, we give them accommodation, and we feeding. give them feeding as well. So the conference was on, and uh, they had interpreters actually interpreting to the people from the north. And everything was going on. We had our set programs. All of a sudden, the ministry that was supposed to happen stopped. And I believe it was Life Headland as well. <laughs> somebody sent a note that somebody required um, Prayer. prayers because the person has been uh, in a widow and has been sort of kidnapped and molested and the lady was looking, she wasn't looking herself. Like a shell. Yeah, well, yeah, so they called her down and the ministration stopped and they started ministering to the woman. By the time she finished, Joy. she was dancing. Joy erupted, Joy erupted in, the place. in the whole place. 
And it was a totally different lady from the lady that and, came and for the conference. And everybody saw it. And everybody saw it. Rejoiced. It was such rejoicing. So those moments are the unique moments that keep on giving us the, um, the hope that yes, something is happening and you're touching lives. Once you sit there for all the sessions, there's such a grace that comes upon you. There's an impartation that rests upon you, a new anointing that comes upon you that you cannot but be changed from the old person, the person that attended the conference and the person who is leaving the conference. This ministry know that I believe in what you're doing greatly. I strongly believe and I partner with them. Awesome things, they've been a major gift to the nation of Nigeria. I, for one, have a personal experience I'd like to share as a press report. Uh, the year 2015 uh, was an intense period where I, I, I needed to actually give definition to certain things in my life. And I remember I had an encounter back then when I came for a retreat here in the city of Ibado. And uh, in that encounter, I started to I had a dream with your about. And the Lord spoke to me about Imam Koran the Clark. I've never met him before. I don't even know. I've heard about the Toronto Revival, but I never knew he was the man God used for that uh, move of the Spirit. So I, I had a dream about him, and the Lord spoke to me about his And then I woke up from that dream, only for me to actually uh, saw uh, a TV program that was actually speaking about Randy Clark. I said, what is it about this man? And, and then the Lord says, you're going to meet him soon. I remember that year. Uh, even when the conference was supposed to take place, I happened to be in the city of Jos. And uh, God so good, Prophet Bahab still recommended that we should go together. And then we came for that conference that year. Uh, I am and uh, uh, our dear beloved minister, Prophet Bahab. And we came directly for this. I remember the encounters of God. I, 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 it was, I've forgotten the name of that location here in Indian Lagos that was close to a beach. I remember seeing angels and um, I, I walk in the prophetic before then I see things. I, I walk in the ministry of angels, but I remember there was a sheet that they have never seen the ministry of angels that intense before. And I just, it was a portal, it was a gateway, and I was glad I yielded. We desire to raise up generations by repairing faulty foundations. We unite the body of Christ by breaking down walls and celebrating all that unites us. In this way, we are impacting the spiritual state of many nations. Um, desires to bring unity across the body of Christ. Um, we have, um, we're always celebrating what binds us together. We come alongside um, bodies, denominations, ministries to share um, foundational truths with them. We come alongside to help teach and train, have conferences. We also are very um, particular about encouraging the full gospel, the preaching and teaching of the full gospel so that the love and power of Jesus Christ can be seen freely um, and walked out and experienced by people um, as we show forth whose we are and whom we serve. And so in this way, we are able to impact the spiritual state of any nation. So I'm a nation builder at heart. I am very passionate about um, Nigeria changing. And so I'm involved in a lot of communities that um, care about nation building and transforming lives to transform communities to transform the nation. So I see Lapis Lazuli Ministries playing a very integral part of that because a nation cannot be changed unless the people in that nation are changed. So as each person touched by the ministry undergoes a personal transformation journey, the, by increasing the numbers that go on that journey, a nation changes. So Nigeria will change because of the sheer number of people that have been touched by the ministry. So I see a direct correlation. The ministry that practice the love of the father to mankind so in that area people that gain back the purpose of god for their life they will go back to the family they will go back to their environment they will go back to their community they will go back wherever they belongs to to bring 
a new person that is in them. And they will go back to show who they are so that people that know them before, they will know that, yes, this is a new person. Through that one, our community, local government, state, country, we experience a divine change. Well, Lapis Lazuli Ministry was um, set up really to minister to all. Yes, with emphasis on the pastors, the bishops and um, leaders in the body of Christ. The desire is that we awaken the body of Christ to the extravagant love of God the Father. The desire is that we um, realize that there have been a lot of faulty foundations. The word lapis lazuli talks a lot about foundations and we all know that um, faulty foundations can't carry um, really big um, buildings and strong um, structures. structures that you want and so there's a lot that we have to repair in the in our foundations and I've seen many people who have been at the Lapis Lazuli conferences like I said earlier becoming new creatures and because of that they're also receiving the boldness to do things that they will not ordinarily have done and I'm a case in point I'm doing the last six seven years I've been doing things that I didn't really think that I'll be doing and um, I love doing it and they're having national impact in, in some respects and some is just changing one person's life just that one person and seeing them what I love them becoming I say they become butterflies so you know how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly that's the same personal transformation that happens when you allow yourself to sit under the anointing of the lapis lazuli conferences and then the anointing that then follows you after the conferences and that's what i love about the ministry they also have training for those who are interested in the prophetic those who want to know more about healing they have healing workshops those who want to get involved with inner healing you have bethel um zozo so I mean, there's just a whole spectrum of what you, 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 you benefit from by being involved with Lapis Lazuli Ministries. It was in October 2020, and my life <laughs> has not remained the same. Zuzu is basically about eating, and indeed, my heart, my soul was healed. It was an interesting, it was an you know, eye-opening experience. It took me even back to several generations in my family line. Sozo is one of the area that God is using to minister to people in an easier way that bring deliverance to their life. Founded by Femi and Mina Bajomo in December 2013, they held their first conference in 2014. Lapis Lazuli Ministries was registered as a ministry in December 2013. We had been in association with uh, Dr. Randy Clark, the president and founder of Global Awakening. And we've met him some two years back, where he prophesied that we will bring him to Nigeria. For two years, we were seeking when he will come to Nigeria. Then, in 2013, in September, we went for a conference Global Awakening Voice of Apostles Conference in Orlando, Florida. Dr. Randy Clark saw us there and we kept on thinking that, okay, where will you come to Nigeria? And it suddenly occurred to him that there was a window in February 2014 that was available for him to come to Nigeria. And he actually told us at that time that he will come and we should get 2,000 pastors ready for his visit. So that was uh, the start of Lapis Lazuli Ministries. We registered the ministry and the ministry was now going to host Dr. Randy Clark in 2014. Right from the beginning, right from inception, when the dream was shared, when the seed was sown, when God started talking to um, Dr. Mina and um, Femi Bajoma about what he wanted them to build, what they wanted them to do. So for that very first conference, I remember in 2014, they approached some of us to give them access to ministries 
um, databases, and I'm, I would, I've been closely involved with quite a number of ministries like Apostles in the Marketplace, like Institute of National Transformation. And as I listened to um, the theme for that first conference, I knew that I just had to be involved with it. I knew that people that I knew in um, INT and AIMP had to be involved with it. And the churches that I was involved with, they needed to know about it. So the early connection was helping them to reach out to ministries. Now, when we had invited um, Randy Clark, we knew that we needed to pray because we were based in the UK. We didn't know many pastors in Nigeria and so uh, my prayer partner Trish Riley and I went to pray and we got um, prayer going all over the world with friends and um, while we were praying the Lord gave us the name. Lapis Lazuli occurs in Isaiah 54 11 as well, Job 28 6 where Lapis Lazuli comes from the rocks, Job 28 16 where the precious oryx or lapis lazuli were things that could be bought. The trustees are Reverend Andy Kane, Bishop Precious and Mrs. Jane Omoku, Pastor Linda Tokuta, Mrs. Olushola Mama, Mrs. Alero Ayuda Otobo, Dr. Gubi Ayuda. I was invited to join the board of trustees and I very quickly said a loud yes. And the reason why was because I knew that that ministry was going somewhere. I knew that Lapis Lazuli was being called to touch lives and to transform lives. So, by bringing this conference, I mean this uh, um, stream of people to Nigeria and working with them, we knew that healing was going to be on the front line. And they went into big crusades where they were ministering to uh, the leaders of the church so that the leaders can take these things back to their own congregation. So for us, it's been an amazing journey since 2014. We have seen lots of healings. Yeah. We have seen lives transformed and yeah. lives changed. We started by saying that uh, by having the conference in uh, Lagos, but since then, we've expanded into Abuja, into Kaduna and we have a team in Joss as well yeah. and that's happened to be only the beginning because 2020 conference was a totally different conference because we had so much because we could do an online conference that's now caught across nations, globe, different countries and people registering from over 40 countries. So it's an expansion that we are just so thankful for. La Pisa Zulu Ministries has a heart for all God's children. Our conferences are open to all. The ministry networks with leaders in the church and marketplace, encouraging friendships, sharing resources, and in this way, fostering and encouraging unity across the body of Jesus Christ. We are committed to helping the bride make herself ready for the King of Kings. It's not just only spiritual food that we give. We do some physical, material things as well because we realize that there's so much need. Last year, as part of our outreach, we sent materials and food items to people in IDPs, in Bono States, Maiduguri, and in Southern Kaduna. So it's part of what we do to sort of impacts the nation as well spiritually and otherwise. We also come alongside widows. Um, we help with um, arranging for them to get small Bibles, audio Bibles, which they can take with them to the farms and listen to the Bible. We look for where God's heart is and we try to um, answer the, the need that the Lord puts on our hearts. We have these conferences once a year. Now we have once a month where we have Kingdom Come, where we have a radio program called As You Go Heal the Sick. So in the past year, we've been able to minister monthly, which is amazing. Technology, of course, was uh, another thing we had to contend with. Yeah. Because we are doing online 
programs, particularly conferences that are global. Electricity must be stable, internet must be stable, and because you are actually broadcasting to the whole world, so you can't afford to have hitches. We have been blessed with a good team, good production team, that have, they've helped us to overcome some of these challenges. But everything continues to be work in progress because we've started uh, a 24-7 Christian online radio. radio last year. And we thank God for what he's doing. So we continue to sort of use technology to enable us to have as best a reach as we can globally. The radio is called Lapis LM Radio. So go check it out. It's, it's an online radio. But it's important that we realize that we have a good God who adores us. He's a yes. father. He calls himself our father. So a lot of the things that we struggle to do on our own, I think if we hand things over to our Lord Jesus Christ, to Father God and to the Holy Spirit, things will go much better. Is God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't just want to do religion anymore. He wants to be in a deep, rela intimate relationship. Yes, a lot are born again. A lot have been Christians for many years. But how close, how intimate are you with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, with God the Father? And that's what he is looking for. He's looking for his children to return to their first love. We aim to achieve our mission by coming alongside buddies of believers and encouraging training through conferences, seminars and outreaches to express the supernatural life of Jesus Christ as modeled by God. I see Lapis Azuli Ministries going global. I really believe that it's going to be one of those ministries that are going to be a reference point for the global revival, the global move, um, global awakening that's taking place across the continents, the six continents of the world. And I strongly believe that Lapis Lazuli has a mandate that is going to infuse what God has deposited in Africa for the rest of the world. God is going to be the disseminating center for the, 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 the depth and the wisdom that God has hidden in Africa. Lapis Lazuli is going to be one of those ministries that will unveil, reveal, and transmit into the entire world that wisdom that is uniquely African, that is uniquely ours. And I'm excited about that. And it's going to touch many, many other ministries. It's like, a, I, I see a seed that has become an oak tree that is now going to be a significant covering for many other oak trees. And what will happen is it's going to be a mighty forest and Africa and other nations will come to that forest called Lapis Lazuli Ministries to, par to participate, to feed, to be nurtured, to be transformed, to become everything that they were destined to be. Femi talked about the expansion in 2020, um, that the ministry now became a global ministry. So people, you know, come for the, um, log in for the conferences, for the teachings from anywhere in the world. And since then, the Lord has expanded Lapis Lazuli Ministries to the radio, uh, online radio station that uh, Femi talked about. Lapis LM Radio. Lapis LM radio. We also have uh, Lapis LM Healing and Prophetic Ministry, which um, is on Zoom, um, serving, open to uh, people coming for prophetic words, open to people coming for healing. And because it's online, we found out that the Lord is mighty. He's not deterred by space or time or or distance in any way and so so many people are being touched and um, loved on by Jesus himself and then we have the Lapis LM resources which is where um, manuals for our, uh, our online teaching series um, Bible study books are, are sold there and then we have 
Lapis LM prayer. We do a lot of prayer. We know that nothing will happen if we are not on our knees, knowing and understanding what the Father is calling us to do at this time. For it is only that that sustains us as a ministry, the ability to intercede, the ability to stay close to our Father's heart, to know what He desires. And we have these conferences, um, the annual one, the very big one like we're having soon, and then smaller ones on a monthly basis. Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli. Minister to people in love and practice it.